Hi, everyone. Harry here to talk about the latest ethics scandal at the Supreme Court. This one, not from Clarence Thomas, but from the author of the infamous opinion overruling Roe v. Wade in the Dobbs case, Samuel Alito. Um, the facts here are um, noteworthy and the sort of process here is noteworthy. So the facts. Alito uh, takes oh, a little fishing trip. Uh, the fishing trip is sponsored by a guy, you know, Thomas uh, has said things about this billionaire buddy, Harlan Crow, who, truth be told, is a um, player at the margins at the Supreme Court. But the, the guy um, that he that Alito took this trip from, uh, who is uh, a billionaire, uh, his name is Singer, so clearly uh, should, uh, you know, a justice not take a fish sandwich from, much less a fishing trip. This guy is a repeat player. He's been involved in merits uh, on the, uh, with the Supreme Court many times. Oh, and just to add to the flavor here, the, the, apparently the kind of link is made that leads to the invitation for the fishing trip by none other than Leonard Leo, the uh, architect of the conservative picks by Trump on the Supreme Court, head of that part of the Federalist Society, you know, a very big player in itself. So it all stinks for starters. Um, and uh, let's go on. He, he takes a seat on Singer's private plane. He flies to a fishing resort. He's fed there. They go out on a fishing trip. There's a, a um, completely ridiculous picture of him holding a big fish with a sloppy smile from the trip. Uh, and, um, you know, there you have it. All right. So now his explanation. First, of course, he says, I followed what I understood to be standard practice. So similarly vague as um, Thomas's, I got, my, you know, advice at the time. So we don't know what that means. And an, and an interesting uh, little uh, tidbit here is the rules have been clarified. Uh, they would, I think, clearly prohibit this. And they have to file new financial disclosure forms, both Thomas and Alito have asked for extensions. Um, you know, you might ask, by the way, is there some connection between this, you know, ethical sloppiness or um, gray zone, um, uh, you know, presence from the very conservative justices and their decisions on the merits? It, it should be a coincidence. Maybe it is. On the other hand, I think there's something in the merits uh, work of the of these two guys as well that is a is sort of a almost a contempt for and indifference toward public opinion that might be related. You can compare, you know, Elena Kagan, a progressive justice who has refused uh, to take, you know, locks and bagels from uh, from former students, lest it run afoul of the ethical prohibitions. All right, so um, uh, here, so Alito. Um, offers a very lame, well, let me step back and give you the context. So ProPublica, which did the Justice Thomas stories, was onto this story as well. Why, this since this happened in 2008, Alito wasn't out front is anybody's guess. It just makes you think what else is there. They, um, as a standard practice, write to him, ask him a few uh, questions. Uh, rather than a no comment, go to hell that you might have expected, um, Alito reaches out to a friendly uh, press uh, outlet, the notoriously conservative op-ed pages of the Wall Street Journal. They operate, by the way, independently of the, the news gathering Wall Street Journal, which is basically um, excellent, a little right-leaning, but really excellent. But the op-ed pages are crazy. And they published a, um, uh, a pre buttle uh, over the weekend by, or, or maybe yes, maybe, you know, Monday by Alito, which is entitled ProPublica misleads its readers and gives his response to the as yet unpublished story. And he says, well, they, I don't really know Singer very well. And during the trip, yeah, I didn't speak to him very much. Uh, I wasn't aware of his connection to other subsequent court matters. Yes, I took a seat on the private plane, but otherwise it would have been unoccupied and I would have had to fly 
um, commercial, or I would have had to fly on an, on a regular airline that would have imposed costs on talk taxpayers. By the way, I happen to know that at least some justices will have, uh, the public pay when they take business trips, but when they take their own trips, they pay themselves fastidiously. So that's, I think, at best deceptive or it, um, uh, bespeaks a kind of, you know, already sort of sloppiness on ethics. The fishing lodge, yes, but it was modest. Uh, there was some report of thousand dollar wine. I certainly didn't drink thousand dollar wine. It was quote, home style meals. Judge for yourself, but basically this seems like fairly lame excuses and you just have to wonder. Um, e even if somehow they're this side of the, of the line or as he understood it to be, What's wrong with, you know, what, what a kind of colossal poor judgment and willingness to consort with, you know, the richest, uh, folks with real access to grind in the Supreme Court, uh, and, you know, try to, sh to take a shield behind what were then vague, uh, um, you know, possible, um, standards. But, you know, it's very suspect even in and of, it's itself and that's giving him the benefit of the doubt and saying it was just on that side of the line so anyway the the remarkable thing of trying to get out front of it it's it is the sort of thin-skinned defensiveness of alito but this is definitely going to add to the calls for reform it really smells bad this big old fish in trip um and um you know how he wouldn't have known whatever, however he read the rule. The best he, one could say is he really tried to read the rules in his favor to somehow elude the requirement of, you know, all he's got to do. Uh, it's not illegal to take a tr uh, present from a friend or even someone's in front of the court, but you got to put it out there so people know and can make judgments about his impartiality. He didn't do it uh, here. And, you know, it really goes to at best, at best for him, a kind of very um, dubious uh, overall sense of judgment and application of the rules. So we'll see if this adds to the kind of um, arrows in the quiver of Sheldon Whitehouse and others who are trying to maybe impose an ethics code on the Supreme Court, but it sure stinks. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.